Okay, Greek has numerous vowels just like English. Alpha, Epsilon, Eta, Iota, Omicron, Upsilon, and Omega. Just like in English, some of these vowels are always short, like Epsilon and Omicron. Some are always long, like Eta and Omega, while the remaining three can be either short or long depending on the word they are in. Additionally, Greek, like English, has things called diphthongs. It's a fun word to say, try it. Diphthong, diphthong, diphthong. Now, diphthongs, when together, make their own unique sound. So alpha and iota together form a diphthong that says I, like in our word aisle. Epsilon and iota make a diphthong that says A, like in our word eight. What you need to really get a handle on when it comes to Greek vowels, though, is contraction. Contractions are when two vowels are placed side by side and meld together. Let me explain what I mean with an English example. Take the verb dive, simply enough. But what if I want to add ing to the end? Well, in English, the e at the end of dive simply drops off, diving. If this were Greek though, the e at the end of the word and the i in the ing portion would contract together. They may contract by becoming a diphthong that would be spelled the same way, but would be pronounced different, diving. Or they may come together to form a long vowel. You're going to see a lot of contraction as you begin to learn Greek. Let me show you a few. First, notice how I told you there are two vowels that are always short and two that are always long. These have relationships. For instance, if an epsilon comes into contact with another vowel, or if there is some other reason for it to lengthen, it will become an eta. If an omicron comes into contact with another vowel, or needs to lengthen for some other reason, it can become an omega. Notice the names, omicron, omega. An alpha can also lengthen up to an eta when it comes into contact with another vowel or needs to lengthen for some other reason. You may be asking yourself, why would vowels come into contact anyway? You'll learn later about something called inflection, but for now just know that Greek will add things to the front and back of words in the same way we do in English. We add s's to make something plural, or we add ed to make a verb past tense. English inflects words too, just not as much as Greek. Here are a few examples. A word stem like this that ends with an epsilon can attach an ending that begins with an epsilon. When they come into contact, they lengthen up to a diphthong with a circumflex accent. In this next example, the word stem ending with an alpha can have an ending that is an omega. When they come into contact, they end up becoming an omega with a circumflex accent. In this last example, the word begins with an alpha. If Greek wants to put an epsilon on the front, they contract together to become an eta. You don't need to memorize all of these types of contractions, just remember that when two vowels come into contact, they will contract together to become one, a long vowel, two, a diphthong, or three, either number one or two with a circumflex accent. The main thing to remember, if two vowels find themselves side by side, they will contract. Say it with me, they will contract. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can find me on the web at ntgreekresources.com, which includes my blog and Twitter feed, and of course numerous resources to help you learn Greek, including apps, songs, videos, software training, and more.